Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. The new Mark NS6 was one of the first controllers for Serato DJ software. That was with Itch when it first came out, then it moved on to Serato DJ. And now here we are, we have Serato DJ Pro and the new NS6 II. Let's take a look. The original Newmark NS6 was released in 2011, a couple of years into the life of Itch, the software which Serato produced exclusively for controllers. It was only around a year later when Serato DJ was introduced, combining DVS and controllers into one app, but the NS6 went with it, and indeed is still supported in the latest Serato DJ Pro today. The NS6 was truly a workhorse. The unit that you're looking at here belongs to my buddy LKP, who has used it live for thousands of hours over the past six years. He has retired it recently, but apart from pretty much all the faders being shot at this point, it still works. When people complain about controllers being like toys, I would point them towards devices like this. It's taken an absolute hammering in a pro environment for more than half a decade and still comes back for more. So for me, the NS6 II had some big shoes to fill. Newmark could have taken the easy route and built something of similar quality with an added performance pad section, but they decided to take things a little bit further. Firstly, let's talk build quality. There's metal all over the place with this unit, it's absolutely solid. It's not that heavy, but it feels really dense like a tank or something. I like the little touches like the bars on the front panel to protect the knobs in transit. Overall, the build has a lot more in common with something like the NS7 III rather than the NV2, and that's important for a road warrior piece of gear like this. The unit is a little bit smaller and lighter than the original NS6, but crucially doesn't feel cramped. This means it's a little bit more portable, but there's plenty of space to use the controls comfortably. I feel like they've just used the space more efficiently with this one. This should be more than enough for most users when it comes to connections. You've got XLR main outputs as well as on RCAs, booth on RCAs, and two RCA inputs switchable between line and phono. More on those later. Both sizes of headphone socket are present, as is split Q. There are two mic inputs, both with separate two-band EQ and dedicated controls on the front panel, so you don't have to give up a channel to use them. That is all great, although I would have liked to see Newmark find space for an XLR input on at least one of those mic inputs. Balance jack is fine, but it's usually easier to find an XLR to XLR lead in the cable box at a venue if you need one in an emergency. Sound quality is great with 24-bit processing and there is lots of output volume, important if you're going directly into a sound system. There's also tons of output on the Q signal as well. Part of this will be down to the NS6 II requiring a power brick. Bus power just doesn't seem to cut it very often when it comes to output levels. One big change over the NS6 is the addition of a second USB port. This means you can share the controller with another DJ also using Serato DJ Pro and do easy changeovers or back-to-back -back sets. It also means you can have a second laptop set up for redundancy at those really important events. Switchover is done on a per side basis, so each computer controls one pair of decks, one and three or two and four at a time. The NS6 II does support DVS control through those line and phono inputs if you have the plug-in for Serato DJ Pro. I tested it and it worked great. The only thing to bear in mind is that those inputs are only on the outer two channels. The inner two are digital only. So if you're looking for a device to use as a four channel standalone mixer, the NS6 II won't be the one for you. It does work as a standalone mixer, but you only have the two inputs. Moving on to the deck sections, the highlight is naturally the six inch jog wheels. They have a nice amount of resistance and feel comfortable when queuing up or scratching. I didn't have any issues with mist or phantom touches, they calibrated perfectly each time I booted up, so all is good on that front. The central displays offer plenty of useful information, telling you which deck is active, platter position, playhead, time remaining or elapsed, the BPM, the pitch and where the key lock is active. The displays are clear and bright, with good viewing angles from in front of the controller. I know not everyone is that bothered about having screens all over their hardware, but for me, these displays are incredibly handy, seriously reducing the amount of Serato face you'll be making if you mix mostly by ear rather than looking at waveforms. Speaking of mixing by ear, the pitch fader is long, smooth and plenty accurate for long manual blends. There's also pitch bend buttons if you like to use those instead of the side of the jog wheel. Up top, you've got the standard Serato DJ effects setup, which works post fader, 
and a search strip for scrubbing through the track, as well as the switch to change between the two decks on each side. Down below there is the pad section, again following the regular Serato DJ template pretty closely. The pads are of the MPC type, with a nice responsive feel and bright RGB illumination around the edges. Size wise they are spot on, big enough to hit accurately with my fat fingers, but still pretty compact. You've got all the expected modes, hot cue, cue loop, manual loop, auto loop, sampler, with velocity mode, slicer and pitch play as well, although you'll need to buy the pitch and time plugin for that one. The mixer section is as fully featured as you could hope for. Each of the four channels has a high and low combo filter, three band EQ, trim, crossfader assign and effects assign switches. The LED level meters are bright and functional. There are some new mark specific features, filter roll which does a loop roll as you turn the filter and filter effects which activates FX1 in Serato DJ Pro as you filter. These can create some interesting textures during build ups which I really dig. Another new mark feature is the touch effects and touch all button found on the left side of the unit. This activates the metal tops of various controls and makes them touch sensitive, so you can activate effects or use the EQs as quick kill switches just by touching the top of the knobs. I don't use these features as much as the filter stuff, but there is still a fair bit of creative potential in there if you go looking for it. One aspect of the NS62 which didn't blow me away was the crossfader. It has a good feel and a sharp cut in, but I found the actual cut in distance to be a little bit long for my liking. It's usable for general club work, no doubt, but those who really like to get down and cut will be a bit disappointed. Thankfully, there is a separate plate around the fader, so it should be simple and straightforward enough to remove and replace it with something like a mini inner fader if you're really into scratching. The browsing and track loading section is clear and easy to use, and I love the fact that Newmark have specified bright red knobs for the master and booth output controls. It's such a small thing, but really great attention to detail. They just scream, don't touch me by mistake, even in the darkest booth. Overall, I really enjoyed using the NS6 too. In the month that I've had it here in the lab on test, it quickly became the go-to controller for me any time that I needed to go and play somewhere with no equipment or bad equipment. I'll never be a huge fan of mirrored layout on controllers with both pitch sliders on the outside edge of the unit, but really that's the only thing that made me feel any less than 100% comfortable. It's easy to carry around, performs really well with Serato DJ, and never feels like it's going to let you down whatever you throw at it. So there you go, a good look at the NS62 from Newmark. This is going to be a fairly short conclusion. What we're looking at here is the definition of a professional Serato DJ Pro controller. It's not the fanciest thing on the market, even in Newmark's own range. They've got things with spinning platters or big displays or waveforms on and stuff like that, but that's not what the NS62 is about. The NS62 is a workhorse. It's the kind of controller that's going to take a beating week after week after week. Pubs, clubs, bars, mobile gigs, whatever it is, however you earn your money as a DJ, this thing is going to be right there with you. Build quality is awesome, really solid throughout. Sound quality is great. You've got all the connectivity you could possibly need. And it's still fun as a performance kind of controller as well. You've got all the stuff in Serato DJ Pro, all present and correct here in the pads. You've got nice little touches like the touch effects, touch filters, etc. So it's by no means boring. It's just not as kind of spectacular maybe as some other controllers. But as I say, that's not what it's about. I think at $800 street price, if you need something that is going to be reliable and solid and not let you down, the NS62 is absolutely a superb choice. Thank you for watching today. Do make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon down below to get notified anytime there's a new video from myself or the rest of the DJ City team. I'll see you soon.